What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 125 of The Road to Glory here with FC United of Manchester and today we have the Champions League uh, knockout stage second leg of the very first round so we are against Bayern Munich uh, it's going to be a tough tie uh, we did win the first leg however um, a few episodes ago 2-1 just a quick little note before we get into this if you did miss the previous episodes I've uploaded like three episodes in the past two days so you've got plenty to catch up on if you've missed them where have you been go check them out uh, and yeah, you know, we're, we're trying to get through this series now in the hype for FM14. But anyway, yeah, as I've mentioned, today is the Champions League tie. We are in early March. It's regen time. Um, I have done a little bit of regen hunting. I'll show you here. It's um, the Germany, France, Wales and Scotland and Russian regen date. They're, they're the five main countries on the 8th of March, if I remember correctly. I'm now going to be completely wrong. And someone's going to laugh at me. But no, um, it's been an interesting time. You can see here, got my scouts here, there and everywhere. Scouting all this new talent sprouting up in March. Uh, standard drill, if you don't know about this or what, what it is. There is a video on this. I, I keep plugging my tips and tricks videos in these videos and people will have watched them already but I am using my standard methods of kind of going through all the leagues looking for individual players in order to find um, I guess the, the talents and the gems hidden, hidden away uh, there are a few players I am looking at um, you know France and Germany always produce good players there's a few Scottish players who are maybes um, it, it's a pretty standard um kind of goings on I suppose the one who stuck out here Felix uh, Weinzel I guess it would be Weinzel because he's German uh, a potential player who might be coming in from Bayern Munich on this region day he's the standout player he's nothing crazy well he is quite good he's quite good I, I say he's nothing crazy because he's only got three and a half star potential my scouts are pretty accurate as well. I should point this out. Like your star ratings uh, vary depending on uh, your scouts, but my scouts are all very good. And although he only has three star potential, for us, even two and a half star, that is still a, a good Premier League centre mid. The problem I have is because my standard of players is so high in my current club, and because star ratings relate to your club's reputation, players already at your clubs, and obviously there's the uh, I guess margin for error depending on your scouts abilities it does mean that someone like this only has two and a half star when in reality he could easily kind of you know be a real top top centre mid so anyway there, there's that going on uh, as I've mentioned today we do have the second leg of this Bayern Munich tie we are at home uh, and uh, we won the away leg 2-1 despite going down to 10 men so that was a really good result uh, just a few games since the last episode which was the League Cup last uh, episode which we won uh, first game here we beat Arsenal in the match replay thing uh, for the FA Cup 2-0 uh, really good performance in the end Peyra grabbing both the goals for us which is really impressive uh, we, we played well you know first leg was a draw so this was the replay and I obviously rested a few players in the League Cup final for this game uh, and all in all top top performance by the team we came we saw we conquered we won 2-0 uh, away from home at the Emirates is a great result following up the league uh, following up with this we have league games to talk about three in fact uh, first one here 2-0 win against Reading fairly convincing Lee Wright getting on the score sheet twice pressed getting sent off for diving pretty standard stuff there seems to be an awful habit with I don't know if it's just me but whenever I bring in South American players and I don't know if this is just FM stereotypes but my South American players always dive I don't know. I, I think that's down to... Actually, what hidden attribute is diving? I think it might be dirtiness or controversy or, or a bit of both. I can't remember what hidden numbers in FM affect a player's likelihood to dive. But nevertheless, it just seems like it always seems to be my players diving. Anyway, we did follow this up with a draw against Aston Villa. Slightly disappointing. Uh, they scored in the 87th minute to turn it around. 2-2, uh, you know, still unbeaten, I suppose. We're, we're closing in on 50 games unbeaten, which would be crazy. Carl Klaus grabbing a brace, which was good to see. The young 19-year-old striker working his magic in the box and grabbing two goals for us. So that was a kind of, I guess, a silver lining uh, to that game. It looked a pretty bleak, but I can take some heart from knowing that Carl Klaus is scoring, which is great for us. And then in our most recent game, a fantastic 3-0 away win against Tottenham at Hoddle Park. Yes, Hoddle Park, a stadium named after Glenn Hoddle. You couldn't make it up. 3-0 <laughs> in the end, Peyrard, uh, Pereira and Wanatabe with the goals, really dominant performance, good to see um, I guess Jean-Philippe Pereira, uh, 
is it Peraria? Yeah, we'll go with Peraria. The former Southampton man who came in in January, coming back from injury, scoring on his first game back, and really contributing, contributing in what was a great performance. So that's that. Looking at today's team, I'm not even sure if I saw it out today's team. I didn't sort out today's team. Well, um, we're going to go with Pavlenko in goal. At the back, I'm going to go with uh, Tangai Horn. Is Matty, yeah, Matty's injured, I believe. Oh, no, he's not. Or is he injured? I never know. He's just tired. Right, we'll give you a rest, Matty, because you're tired. Um, as you can see, we've got a few players injured, and Nazarov obviously got sent off last episode. Uh, Carlinhos just isn't registered. Uh, fortunately, Jean-Philippe um, Peraria can actually play today, the Frenchman. He's not tied in Europe uh, because Southampton didn't play in it, which is another plus point with that signing. You know, 26 million was a lot for him, but he's a very useful player to have, and he's certainly demonstrating that. On the transfer front, and this is just a quick one, Luis Enrique here, obviously very loyal player to the cause, to the club, um, is currently getting a lot of transfer interest from a lot of clubs. Am I asking price is 48 million? And I've actually had a few bids of 45 million for him. So I am hopeful that I might be able to sell him on for maybe 50 million, which whilst an incredibly large amount of sum, uh, it's probably about what I'd need to replace this man. I mean, he's been a staple of our team, and he's he, I mean, he's played a lot of football this season. He's had a fairly solid season. It's probably his best season. He has avoided injury. He's been playing a little bit more. Um, he came in for two million, um, blimey, five, four or five years ago. Uh, but there's a time when you have to kind of look at a player and go, well, maybe it's time to move them on, and this might be his time. So he's a player who might be in on the outs, but his heart is still in the game. He will still be playing for us. Looking at our team, it's all pretty much full strength with the exception of perhaps uh, Nazarov not playing. And, I mean, Pereira is not here, but Pereira is injured again. He's He's been so unlucky, this man. Uh, if I just show you injuries, um, he just he just can't stop getting injured. Torn calf muscle, broken leg, torn groin. He may also get sold this summer. There's a few parties interested in him. He's had a lot of injuries. It's really affected his performances, and he just hasn't been able to get that run of fixtures going. But we've also obviously got Juan Atabe, who came out uh, in this um, season from Chelsea, and so far so good for this guy. Really kind of adapted well to this league. Uh, well, not league. He was playing in this league last season, but really adapted well, I guess, to our style of play. And with Pereira being injured, it's meant that he's got plenty of first-team football, and he's certainly using that well. Rico Francis is back from injury as well, which is a good thing to see. Um, obviously, he was injured... Um, what do you call it, uh, for most of this season through injuries. So he's been out for a little while, but he is on the bench today. He's actually a player who I believe scored against Bayern Munich. I mentioned last episode that we had a game against Bayern Munich. I believe it was last season in the Champions League. Um, let me see if I can find it for us. Here we go. Bayern Munich, we actually drew, played these guys last year in the semi-final. And the first leg was a 1-1 draw with Rico Francis getting the goal for us there in the 94th minute of added time. And then, of course, we got what was a pretty legendary home... 2-1 win against them with Pedro and Hubner getting on the score sheet. But today we go into a kind of a slightly different situation. We have a stronger team than we had last season. I really do believe that. Um, I look at our squad and I just think we're better. And obviously we have that goal lead from the first leg. So anyway, looking at the pre-match stuff, you can see here... Um, we have a few players out. Uh, Alexander Rodgers out as well with a hamstring injury. So that's kind of, in some ways, helped to solve my dilemma when it comes to the centre-back position because I have five players battling for positions. But there's been a few injuries, so it's kind of good that we have as much depth as we do. Looking at past meetings, the only past meetings come in last season and in the previous legs. So not too much to go off there. Looking at the odds, we are favourites uh, to go out and get a result today. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on. You guys have already seen the team. I'm pretty content with that lineup. A very strong team for us today. Uh, Zorak and um, Jeko will be playing against us. And is that the Pablo? That is the Pablo, ladies and gentlemen. Another former FC United of Manchester uh, player. It's almost like Bayern Munich are the FC United of Manchester reserves in many ways. Anyway, looking at the pre-game stuff, we're still on our unbeaten run. If we win this, it'll be 45 games without defeat. We've not conceded in over 400 minutes of football. Uh, and just crazy, crazy records to try and maintain at least this episode. Although it's a lot easier said than done. We will see how we get on here um, against Bayern Munich. So, let's jump straight into today's leg. Shea Given can take the instructions. He has really good... Um, 
St- uh, staff attributes for uh, I guess assigning ins- instructions himself so I very much always leave him to do that he, he always does a good job of it cannot complain at all we'll see how we get on today um, yeah we're, we're gonna it's gonna be tricky but we do have this kind of advantage from the first leg we're on form we've not lost in su- such a long time now this is the kind of game which we should win and we should win comfortably so we will we'll see how we get on here uh, obviously, squad is at full strength. A few players who I'd like to see give good performance here, like Pereira, who came in on loan. But it looks like Bayern Munich are going to open up the chances here. Well blocked by Peyrard, who will then win the second header. And Pereira, the man of the moment, the man who I said I want to see turn up on a run here. Former Southampton lad, working some space there. Ball through to Preston, nodded onto the keeper, but good early pressure. Good to see our wing backs really getting in on the play. This team, uh, this formation that we play is obviously fairly narrow, and it does rely on our wing backs to get forward. And with Nazarov booked, uh, and banned it relies on players like Press to a second string to really put in their shift and he looked like he was doing that as I ramble on Sarah with the goal there again another goal for us good goal for him uh, that makes it 3-1 on aggregate and we're looking good here as Payrod now bursts through options in the centre crosses it in and he gets the rebound that is 2-0 4-1 on aggregate we should be home and dry now and I say should because Bayern Munich now need three goals in the remaining 50 minutes of this game Really good performance, already turning up. Uh, formation is looking really solid for us here. And looking at the stats, Bayern Munich only one shot on goal. This could easily slip into a route if Bayern Munich are not careful. Um, that said, you know, we've always got to be wary to the counter-attack because FM loves to see goals against you just like that when you've not had a shot against your game and then suddenly they get a goal and it changes the whole complexion of the tie. Hopefully we can see this out into half-time and indeed we will. 4-2 on aggregate. Really happy with the team's performance. Sarah and Peyrod with the goals. Preston Goffier with assists. Uh, just really happy. Uh, Going to try and keep the players motivated. We will do that very nicely. Plenty of options on the bench if I do want us to go maybe slightly more defensive if we were to concede again. Uh, but we're looking good at the moment. Set piece here. Peyrod whips the ball in. Watanabe surely fouled. He was indeed. Ref gives a foul. Uh, the penalty. This is a chance to make it 5 2 on aggregate. Uh, mean that by, like, kind of forced Bayern Munich into having to score three more. And Sarah takes it. That's his second goal of the game. Great performance, Sarah. Obviously, £35 million he came in for from Barcelona, which was a pretty hefty sum. He came in to plug the gap left by Alfredo Senior and Jao Jose leaving. And so far, so good. Unfortunately for us, Luke Shaw has just got injured and this does kind of scuffle my plans because I don't have a wing back on the bench. I actually looked at the bench whilst I was rambling on before the game and contemplated putting Diego on, but that obviously I didn't do it, so I can't really... Oh dear. Um, ugh, it's not ideal, this shape, but we will go with it. Uh, it gives us a chance, I guess, just to mix up the squad a little bit. Uh, we'll go with a fairly conservative... Three centre backs and two um, centre defensive mids. Hopefully, we can see out this tie, though. Obviously, unlikely that we'll concede three. Uh, hopefully, this kind of shape crowding out the centre will serve us fairly nicely. I mean, Bayern Munich are hardly playing the 4 3 3 with Ribery on Robben on the wing that perhaps they might have done against me 16 years ago in this save. You know, they now play a very kind of standard 4 4 2. So, there's not too many threats from the wings to worry about. And so, I feel crowding out the central area like that really could be the best way to go. You can see here we've got a mass amount of players here really acting as some nice defensive coverage to their two strikers uh, which is all we really need at the moment per area with a goal, goal opportunity here Payrod eventually it falls to him that will make it 4-1 a great performance this is very quickly turned into a rout 6-2 on aggregate and we are looking very very dominant indeed uh, good play by the entire team we have turned up here uh, good to see kind of a variety of players get on the score sheet. Serra, of course, on for a hat-trick. Rico Francis here. Pereira is playing well. Payrod, can he get the shot away? He can get it away. Of course he can. That is Payrod's hat-trick as well. So three goals for him, two goals for Serra. Pereira with plenty of assists and with five minutes left. Just going to do the last sub. I'm going to give Payrod a standing ovation down to 62%. I kept him on with an opportunity of him getting his hat-trick. And that should be GG's. 
Um, 5-1 <laughs> we have played surprisingly well I was worried this might be a cagey affair but our team's kind of very determined nature comes out um, and we've turned up you know there's been a few games this season where we've not turned up and we've only had to settle for draws but this is the kind of performance you know beating Bayern Munich a team who were in the semi-finals of this competition last year and lost to us to beat them 7-2 on aggregate is pretty incredible and Sarah gets his own hat-trick as well what can I say 6-1 8-2, crazy, crazy oh. performance. Um, kind of beyond my expectations, if I'm honest. Almost played better with the two defensive midfielders, dare I say. Um, but no, great performance, full-time whistle. I guess Bayern Munich will be happy to hear that. 6-1, you can see here, two assists for Pereira, the Southampton lad. Serra and Peyrod both getting their hat-tricks and a variety of players sharing the assists. Fantastic performance by the team. Um, very, very happy. In, in case that isn't obvious by how kind of chirpy I've become, continue um, our unbeaten run. Unfortunately, we did concede, but I would certainly take um, this result, kind of a 6-1 over a 0-0, keeping the clean sheet. It's a great win, great performance. Uh, other teams going through here, Arsenal going through, Chelsea going through, CSKA Mos Moscow going through, Man City going through, uh, Lyon go through on away goals, Real Madrid go through and uh, Valencia go through. So a variety of teams there, all four Premier League teams still in the competition. I'm not sure when the draw for the next leg is. Can I find it if I hit continue enough? I'm not sure. Let's, let's find out. Does it show it? It doesn't say when the next draw is. And I don't think it will have already been made. That That is one feature at FM14 I'm looking forward to, is the uh, predictive, um, where it kind of shows you uh, predicted fixtures that could be coming up. That would be great in this kind of situation. Uh, basically, what it does is on the calendar, it says there might be a game here that you have to kind of worry about, which is quite a useful feature. It's kind of ideal in this kind of situation. Uh, but that's a fantastic performance by the lads. Looking at our fixtures coming up, we've got quite a few what you could say are tricky ones against Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea. I'm not going to do the FA Cup sixth round because it is the quarterfinals and we've had quite a lot of episodes in a short spell here. I'd like to just crack on with this save. Uh, I'm guessing the next one will probably be the Manchester City Premier League game. I'm looking at the league table here. Manchester City are top. They're two points ahead of us because we slipped up against uh, Aston Villa with that draw. However, we have got two games in our hands. So I think that's probably going to be the best game to go to. You can see it's very close at the top of the league here. Uh, you'd have to say we are still in the best position of the bunch. Uh, considering the fact that we are kind of, I guess, third. Two points behind us, I've already said. But we do have two games in the hand, which could be big. So anyway, yeah, guys, I will see you for the Manchester City tie. That will either be up later this evening or tomorrow. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And other than that, guys, it is me, Jack. Thank you so much for watching, as always, guys. And I will talk to you in a bit. I'm out.